Hello everyone, this is Robin Carter and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm here to share my second video showing some alternatives that I have made using the August 2023 paper pumpkin kit named Meaningful Flowers. But before we get started, let me thank those of you who have subscribed to my channel. And if you're brand new to the, my channel or maybe you've seen a few videos, but have yet to subscribe, I would really appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button below and give me a shout out from where you are from. So let's get started with my alternates. So um, like I said, I have already done an unboxing and uh, three alternates using one envelope that are in my channel. So you can always click on my videos and search all those others. But today, I'm going to share a few alternates and I have my goodies in here of what I want to do. I haven't pre-made one of these cards yet, but I have all the elements ready to go. So I have a thick white card base, and then I have a layer of Tahitian Tide cardstock um, here. And then I found some butterflies that were paper pumpkin before. I'm really sad they uh, retired the other butterflies, so I try to use stuff you may have. Uh, especially if you've been a paper subscriber for a while, but any butterfly would work. I know we've had some more recent ones. They're just a little bigger, but I like the size of this one. And this is from December 2017 called Flora and Flutter. All right, so here's what I wanted to use was this piece. Now it's the back side of the meaning of the flowers. And I just thought that side was too pretty to not use on a card. So I'm thought I would just do a quick and easy little scene. Now here's a little tip if you are <laughs> want to really save on your cardstock, you can always cut the center out, die cut something out of it, especially when, uh, like this is a card front, so it's pretty thick paper. Now I don't do that when it's a thinner top, like an envelope or so forth, but I thought I would show you that you can easily cut out the center of cardstock with your paper trimmer just by doing that. So I just thought I'd show you that. Like I said, I wouldn't do it on thinner paper or if you um, don't really care, which I generally don't, <laughs> I just use a whole quarter of a sheet of cardstock. So this one is cut to four and one eighth by five and three eighths. All right, and then this is a quarter of an inch smaller. So it is uh, three and seven eighths Actually, this one is just an eighth of an inch, sorry. This one is four by five and a quarter. And let me just test that here on my grid paper. Yes, it's five and a quarter by four. So when I trimmed the top, I just did the sky part because I didn't want to lose any flowers. So let's adhere this to the Tahitian Tide. And I'm going to use my Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue that I have in a fine tip glue bottle. Now the glue bottles, these little five by seven organizers, um, as I always mention, they are part of my favorite things. But if you're new to my channel, my favorite things are just some items that I've found that help me stay organized and uh, make me not lose little pieces to the kit if I put them in there. And those are in, uh, in the description box of this video below and they are safe links to use. Uh, I'm an Amazon affiliate and I get those leaked links straight from Amazon. So if you like these items, I would appreciate if you would use those links to purchase these. Support me a little bit. Okay, so there's our scene. And I really like how the Tahitian Tide just pulls those flowers out. But um, you know me, I wanted to decorate it up a little bit. So I pulled out the uh, Sunshine. Uh, it's from February of this year. I just have uh, my scan and cut, which I've used to cut some of these items. And then also some clouds from the Playing in the Rain set that coordinated with that paper pumpkin. Let me get the um, stamp set, just a second. You know, and I also have people who wonder how I store my paper pumpkins. And this is how I do it. I do it in these sleeves which you, if you are a paper pumpkin subscriber of mine, you receive these each month, as well as a uh, one inch square of cardstock to go on the back of your ink spot so you can store it upside down. 
But anyway, I thought I really loved this sun from the uh, Sunshine and Rain uh, Smiles set. And so I thought I would get that out. Now, I do have a scan and cut, and I stamped it and uh, made myself a pre-die cut item so that then I can stick it in my stamp apparatus. So let me make sure I get the right one out. Okay, and this is a stamp positioning tool, which they no longer are able to sell. But this is my favorite stamp positioner, so I'm going to continue to use it. Now, when I made my excuse me, cut file in my template. I noticed this little bigger spot right there. So I put an arrow there where I, where I would know where to put it. And then I'm going to get my crushed curry ink spot. I think we received one of these recently. Of course, it's harder to get open sometimes because I tape it. All right, so let's ink. I'm, I'm a little off screen, but that's okay. I'm just inking it with crushed curry ink. And this is how I do all my die cuts and things. Whoops. I have my lotuses on the other side. All right, let's see how that's stamped. Not really well. Maybe my ink is getting low. So let's do it again. This is the beauty of using a stamp positioning tool is you can do it again, and it should go right over the top. Now this one may be extra dark when you do two. But it'll probably lighten up a little bit as it dries. So let's stick with that. Actually, you know what? I'm not happy with that. And I have more cut over here in my little... This, these are three by five, and I find these are handy as well. I have lots of sun pieces that I put in there. I'm going to grab my big crushed curry pad because I know it's nice and juicy. And I'm going to ink that up well over here. All right, looks like I see ink everywhere. And let's ink that up. Give just a second for the ink to absorb into the paper. Okay, that one's a little lighter. I think I like that one much better. Let me clean off my sun. Now I have a chamois, but I keep a wet paper towel over the top of it so that my uh, chamois pieces don't need rinsed out as often. I also have the stamp and scrub, which I love, which I showed, I think, in the unboxing. It's great, especially for the distinctive stamps that came with this set. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. Now, along with the sunshine and smiles, there was a uh, coordinating set called Playing in the Rain. And it had some clouds, but you could also just trace the cloud that came in this kit. If you still have the negative, I, I think I told everybody to save your negative so you can trace clouds. But I have some here. So we're just going to play around with the positioning. And this one is just an old one that I had laying around. So I have three different sizes of clouds. And I think I'm going to do it like that. I kind of like how the sun is kind of behind the cloud. And these. So I'm going to glue the sun flat on the corner. Find my Tombow multi-purpose glue. Just put a few dots, that's all it needs. I'm going to turn this right here just so that spot will get covered. Okay, and then I already have some dimensionals on my cloud, so I'm just going to pull off the backing. I'm going to do him kind of over the sun. The little lighter one, he's higher in the sky. I don't think he's kind of turned. I think he goes like that. And then this medium size one. But you could also just fussy cut some um, clouds if you don't have any of these sets. And so that sets our scene. And I thought, you know what? It really needs something else. And so that's where I wanted a butterfly. And I thought this one was the perfect size. Now in my kit, I just happened to already have some. Now this color would be fine. But I'm actually going to make a melon mambo one 
It's a coordinating color. Even though it's not in here, it just gives it a little more color. Now with just doing a little image like this, you can use your markers. You don't have to use the balloons. So I am going to use my marker. Now this is the um, previous style. They do have uh, a newer style. But if you're just doing a little image, you could either use your ink and a blender pen. That would be fine. You could also use your watercolor pencils. I know I always tell uh, my subscribers that those are a nice investment. All right, so there's some pink. And then I'm going to take my basic gray just on the ends. I did look up. I, I often Google because I like to have realistic um, things on my cards. And there is a pink butterfly. So I thought I would make him. Now often what I do with butterflies is I bend the wings up. And then I just put my Tombow multi-purpose glue right on the body. I'm going to have to refill this soon. Right, and we're going to stick him here and then we're going to have room for a sentiment. So I'm going to do a sentiment. Now one of my favorite brand new sets that's coming out uh, that I showed in the last video is this uh, So Sincere stamp set. It's a new stamp set in the mini catalog that's coming live August 6th. I know it's one day before my um, host code. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me, let me get a drink. I got a tickle in my throat. <clears> throat> Anyway, I really love all the sentiments in this stamp set, and its item number will be 162283. So if um, there are any items you see in this, uh, in my videos, I would really appreciate if you use my host code. As I said, this one runs through September 7th, so it will be valid when the brand new catalog goes live. And any orders of $75 or more, you will receive a special gift from me as I thank you. So let's get back to the card. So I'm going to use this stamp set. Um, I've used this one on another card. Let's see. I, now I really love your in my heart and in my prayers. So let me see if that one's still in here. Okay, it's on a block already. Now I also have a video that I did long ago of how to get these, uh, the cling mount stamps, how to get the label on straight. It's nice and easy. So um, you can find that in my channel as well if you're having trouble with that. So let's find a label that we like. Now, I think I've shared this too. In the five by seven labels, I have um, pre-cut some. That way I have them ready to go. These are a little big and I think I want one of the smaller ones from the All That. Here we go. This one will be nice. Now with a circle, I'm hoping I can get it straight. Do I want a circle? Let's see if that's too big. That's a pretty big circle. I'm going to use this little oval if it'll fit if I have any. I tend to use this one a lot, and I'm just not sure if that's going to be big enough. This one's going to be a little small, so I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> We're going to go to the stylish shapes because there are so many um, sizes that there should be plenty. All right, let's try this one. And the good thing with this circle is um, you don't really have to worry about lining it up. All right, so I like to do my sentiments in Memento Tuxedo Black. Um, I just, I don't know, I prefer that. And I see I got that a little thick. I shouldn't have pressed so hard. So I'm going to start over on my inking. All right, and let's just, let's just lightly touch. Okay, no big blobs. And then I just kind of set it down. You don't want to mash, especially with cling stamps, because if you got any ink on the side, you will get the boo-boos of that. That's a nice crisp image. And that's another thing I love about the cling stamps. All right, so I like that a lot. So if we're gonna add that to our card here. 
and I am going to put that on dimensionals because I love dimensionals. <laughs> so let me grab my box. Some came in this kit. I just keep using uh, ones I've started until they're gone. And as a savings, I do cut them in half. So rather than putting a put three whole ones on here, I'm putting three half ones. And that is more than sufficient to hold those on there. All right. Now let's put that on there. And I will finish this up with some bling. I tend not to use the bling in the kit until I have finished all my alternates. And then I know what I have left to use from either the kit or uh, some other embellishments that I purchased from the online store. Now, if you love the saying of what this flower means, you could always just type it up yourself and insert it in the card. But like I said, I really love the image of the flowers. So I wanted to use that side of it. All right, so there is my first alternate. It might even look good to put some ribbon there, but um, this is it for now. And I'm still not happy with this cloud. There, he looks better. So that's one alternate for today. Let me put all these goodies up and we can get started with the next one. All right, and then I also showed in my unboxing that I have these seven by nine ish folders. And what's nice is all your components fit in here nicely. So I'm gonna slide this in just so I don't lose it and put it out of the out of the way okay i actually made four alternates and i'm gonna um, share at least two it kind of depends on time if we get to the other ones or i will uh, do another one later uh, another video okay so this is my next alternate and again it's very easy i i really didn't like how the cards were uh, put together which I tend to do alternates anyway, but to each their own. So I wanted to use this beautiful um, flower image. So I thought I would get some more Tahitian Tide, Tahitian Tide, right? Cardstock. And then I did a piece of white that I have embossed with the painted texture embossing folder. And then I brought in <clears throat> just uh, from our Welcome In Paper Pumpkin set these add-on dies that we had. So uh, I did already pre-stamp one and I used a uh, copper clay. That was an ink spot we received this year as well. And it kind of gives it a terracotta look. So I liked that. So anyway, I just wanted to show you these were the dies and there were also some extra, um, some pre-done for you if you didn't like that. Now I have a trick to show you using the uh, something fancy dies. All right, so I wanted to use this um, hope you're feeling better, but because the whole die, I think this is the smallest one. It's kind of got an icky, you know, it's way too big, right? <laughs> so let me show you a trick that I love to use on your dies. You can make them any size you want. So I made this one like this and I left this piece here to show you that I simply just stamped on the left hand side of the full size die. Okay. And then I brought in this. You can see that that's the full size. So then I just moved my die down to cut where I wanted it. All right. So I've made that size and it fits much better here. And then I did the same thing with the larger die to make a mat for it. And I did that in copper clay just to bring in a little more of that color. Um, you tell me if you like that or not, or do you like it? I think it got kind of just lost the shape and this really brings out the shape. So let me put these back up. These are some of my favorite label dies too. So here's the whole set. 
um, it comes with many different si uh, labels and tags or you could flip this one around and get this pretty uh, decorative edge on each side kind of like I did here all right so let's adhere this to here and like I said this is a thinner paper I mean it's not super thin but I'm just going to leave that a solid sheet I'm not going to try to save the center out of that one Let's use uh, my liquid Tombow glue so I can move it around. Okay, and I have a card base here already scored and folded. But I just want to find which side is the front. And I think it's this side. Um, they tend to hang over just a hair on one side or the other. So I always feel to see where the longer side is and I make that the top. So back to the Tombow liquid glue. So as I said, let me know kind of where you're watching from. I love to hear that. I do read all comments and try to reply. And as always, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it with your other crafty friends. Whoops. I missed the card when I picked that up. All right, let's get that kind of centered on there. A nice little rub to smooth and I'll try not I notice I shook the camera a lot I try to be mindful of that but sometimes it's just hard because the camera is attached to my table all right I already have some dimensionals on the back of this flower so I'm just gonna pick them the backings off I did quite a few I wanted it to stand up and not sag anywhere. All right, touch and feel. Okay, but let me also do the pot at the same time so that I get it like I like it. So this die cut was in our kit and this pot is from the Welcome In Paper Pumpkin set that had the add-on dies. All right, I think I like it about there. So I'm gonna set him down and I'm gonna put the pot over the top. Okay, and I'm going to do my sentiment. Let's see if he fits under here. No, that's too high, whoops. All right, let me glue first the sentiment onto the border or the layer that's bigger than it is. So what do you guys think about that tip? It may not be new to you, but I thought I'd show you. Look what a cute different shape it makes. I like that a lot. So do I want it to go under? I don't think I want it to cover any flowers. Let's put it here on dimensionals. Get those back out. All right, one, two, we'll do four to kind of get the top and bottom of this one. So again, I did four pieces, but that's only two dimensionals. I could use my take your pick tool, but I have good strong natural nails, so I use those. They're always with me. All right, so let's put that here. So I thought that added a nice uh, color balance. But as I said, you could use just about any coordinating color you wanted to, but I do know we got this recently as an ink spot, so I thought I would give that a try. So if you bling this up with some uh, rhinestones or some of the embellishments that came in this kit, I think it'll be pretty. So how are we doing on time? Maybe I will share one more. Okay, so you guys know that I love uh, 
the Sun Rays stamp set. So I had, I'm not going to show it to you yet. Um, here's my card base and here's my layer piece. Um, let me get out. I was planning on doing this later, but I think we're good on time. So I'm going to do three today. So we have this funky card base. And I think it's the one that I cut off to get the uh, first one we did. So I'll just cut another. I know that one sticks to everything. All right. So this was the side I used on the first card. So I cut this piece off. So let's cut that one off. And I wanted to use these pretty flowers, but it, I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted to do it. And then I remembered my sun rays stamp set. Let's see if that's right in this. I think I did good. All right, so I cut that off and I'll use this to make another one. So I got out my sun rays stamp set and I don't know where the case is, but I have the stamp already on a stamp apparatus so we can make this one. I just got to find which stamp apparatus. <laughs> okay. We'll just use this one. I can take this off. All right. So I put it on a plate. Now I'm going to need, uh, since this is red rubber, you don't use any mats. So whether you have the deluxe mat or just the black mat that came with it, you'll take that out. And this is the uh, Rays of Light stamp set. I think I was saying the name wrong earlier, but I think it's called the Rays of Light. Let me get my glue back upside down so it's ready to go. So here's what I did is I just took this, all right? You kind of just want to put it on the stamp set where you want it. Now, you only have a little bit of wiggle room if it's going to be a full card. So I tried to bring it up the sun, which was right there, as much as I could. And so another way to do this, when I first did it, I just took this off like that, lined it up with my hands, the paper. You could also just get a larger piece and then trim it later. So I sat it down and then I picked it up with the plate. I know I have other flowers on here. Is it really that crooked or did it move? You know, I'm going to do that again just to make sure. I should have just got a larger piece and then trimmed it, especially for the video. But this worked out fine when I did it earlier today. My air conditioning is blowing too. Oh, it's stuck to it. All right, we're just going to do this one more time. All right, I should put maybe some temporary glue on the bottom of that cardstock. All right, let's hope that that works. All right, so I'm going to use my full size Crush Curry ink on this one. I am going to trim it down a little bit, so if it's not perfect, it'll be fine. All right, so you want to ink this up well. If you do a bigger piece, then you can. Uh, tape your paper down and if you didn't ink it well you could do it again all right let's give that a second to absorb the ink let me close this up so I don't get my elbow in it this stamp just really brings a wow just about to any card I really loved using it in the Sunshine and Smiles uh, kit. So if you miss those, go check out those videos. All right, we did good. So there is our ray of light and it's meant to have this uh, distressed look to it. And so this is especially where I like to use my paper towel to get off any excess ink. So it doesn't turn my whole little chamois piece yellow. All right, and then I'm going to get off that out 
And then you, especially if you did a smaller piece, you may want to clear off your uh, stamp position platform. Okay, so there's our sunshine. As I said, I got a base. <clears throat> I stamped this. Now, I know I'm going to want to trim this, and then I'm going to want to use this right here. So let me go ahead and show you the card. I can see I already will have to <laughs> put that one on a new base. It got in the yellow. But here is my card, and I thought it was uh, kind of stunning like that. Um, so I want, that's what I wanted to use the, the other part of the card base for. So let me get my trimmer back out. And the good thing is, if you miss one side, that's the side you're going to trim. I see I need to trim this one just a little bit, so I'm going to do that one just a hair. Oop, I'm off screen there. And I'm going to trim this side to five and three eighths. And four and an eighth. So I want this to be, see, it's going to go like that. I want it higher in the sky, so I'm going to trim, let's see. I think I want to trim this side. I don't want it anymore on the left. So to four and one eighth. I'm not going to make that much difference, so you can just pick however you want to trim it. Okay. So we're going to put the sun in the sky. What do you guys think of this card? It's kind of bright, but I think it's pretty. It's almost like it's a uh, rising sun in the morning. All right, get that centered. And I did feel for the front. Okay, now I need another sun from my Sunshine and Smile. So let's get that back out and do that again. I get the right plate. And Here it is. Now I have other things on this mat that I've lined up for other projects I've been working on, but um, we're not using those. We're just using the sun. And then you just make sure you get it back on the right plate. Actually, you got to get the rounded corner here. Okay, that's correct. All right, sun back on here. This just saves me a whole lot of fussy cutting. I do have, uh, so I've had my uh, Gannon cut for several years. They no longer make my model, but one similar to it. And it is in the list of my favorite things as well. So if you do a lot of crafting, I really like it. Now, it doesn't always replace dies um, because the dies, uh, some of them are very detailed. And I like the detail that those give, but especially with paper pumpkin, which generally does not have dyes, I tend to use it a lot. Now I like that sun. And I did that with the, the mini. All right, so let's clean that off. And I'm going to adhere this one. This fit, fits perfect with this rays of light. So I hope you got this cute paper pumpkin set. As I said, I love to use the stamps over and over again. It shows what a value you get out of the kits. Okay, so he's down. Now, when I went to put this flower on, I debated whether or not to put down some more green over here, but I just decided against it, against it. but since this uh, 
kind of looks like it's going off. I wanted to make sure I covered up all the sunshine. But I still wanted to put it on dimensionals because it gives it some interest. So just be very careful when you set this one down. Now this one you're going to need quite a few because you want it to hold up. While I'm doing this, I'll tell you, I'm having a little trouble with the lotus uh, backgrounds because I don't know, the pretty peacock and the for a lily pad just kind of doesn't look right <laughs> to me. Here's some old scissors. Let me just cut these in half. So I'm thinking hard and we'll see what I have one. But I was glad we had so many elements to work with to make cards. So you can make, is it four of these? Because we have four card bases. Or you could come up with your own little design. Whoops, sorry, I forgot which ones I took off. I'm having to touch them to see if they're sticky. I think that's all of them. All right, so you just want to be very careful when you set this down that you can get right on this raise. Okay, so I did another butterfly from the flora set. Let's see where I put that one. It's got a mess over here now, but I've showed you so many things. Probably back here in the scene in the card. So there's, I do have one more, and I think I'll do the same pink to give it a pop of color. If I can get get him out. All right, so let's color. I do at least have him already <laughs> cut so that you don't have to sit here and watch me cut it. I think these I actually had pre-cut with my scanning cut years ago. So I know I've, I've at least had it since 2017. And this is basic gray. So if I didn't say that was Melon Mambo for the body, which is a coordinating color of this kit. And I'm almost forgetting. I need to show you the uh, next month's kit. But let me finish this card and then I'll give you a preview of next month's kit. For some reason, we're not getting little flyers showing the, the preview. But I have a photo that I can go to my computer and switch screens and show you that. All right, so let me see if I can do that. All right, but here is my alternate. Now you can do any sentiment you want. This was from that same stamp set. I'm going to leave my sentiment off for right now, but what do you think about this alternate using the other part of that card? All right, so let me let's just preview before I'll end the video with the preview. So we made this card using one half of this card base, and then we made this card with the front of it, and then I made one more using the forget-me-not bouquet that they include in the kit, and I brought in the uh, welcome in die and pot that was in that set and a new stamp set that's coming in the mini December catalog. So these are my three alternates for today. As I said, give me a thumbs up if you like these. Give me a shout out to where you're from. If Again, if you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate your subscription. But let me flip my computer to the screenshot to show you.
All right, here is the preview of the September 2023 paper pumpkin kit named From the Heart. It was inspired by the founder, Shelly, and she always does such beautiful uh, inspiration. Anyway, I love how they show us a preview of the stamp set and the cards and envelopes as well as the pretty box. Now, I can tell you that these are not going to be full-size cards as the kit is intended. Uh, however, I can see from the envelopes that I'm going to be able to cut those up and make full-size cards if that's something that more than interests you are a full-size card. Also available is a journal. So if you are a person that likes to journal, this journal is available through the online store. Its item number is 163270. It has nothing to do with the kit itself. It's just a pretty journal that, that looks much like the paper pumpkin kit. So grab it up before it's gone. So I'm back with you. So I hope you enjoyed that little preview of the kit. I've been wanting to do that and I hope it worked out well on the video. It's the first time I've really done that. Um, but it's good to learn new things. So as I said, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing below and ring the bell for notifications of when I post my next video. So as I said, I'm working on the Lotus ones and I have one, but I like to share at least two or three on a video and I don't like to take up too much of your time. So until my next video, have a great day, everyone. Excuse me. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.